you get there, this is what it's going to look like. When you're actually in the lesson, it will ask you for a name. Please use your real name so that I will be able to tell whose answers are whose because I can see this up here as well. So I'm going to control your screen. This lesson is about basic percent problems. And what you need to remember is that percents are used as fractions to describe the relationship of a part to the whole. Specifically, it's used to describe parts per 100. We talked about that last class period. A basic percent problem looks like the one below. Percent, which has to be written as a decimal because we don't want to um, do things the calculator will help us with if the calculator doesn't understand percents. So we want to use the percent as a decimal, which is why we went through how to convert. And the problem is going to be percent times a number that is before is equal to some other number that came after. And I want you to try to understand this relationship. There are other ways to do percent problems than what I'm going to show you today. There's lots and lots of correct ways to do them. Please don't fall back on your old ideas of how to do these because the way I'm going to show you today will always get you the right answer, but it's going to require that you analyze a problem to pick out the information and the analysis part of this is going to be very, very, very important in the lessons that come after today. So this is kind of like laying a foundation. So here's our first example that we're going to do. The newspaper reports that 44% of 1,069 people surveyed think the president is doing a good job. How many people said the president is doing a good job? Now, this is going to be our pattern. Percent, written as a decimal. Okay, that's easy. You know what percent is, right? You pick that out right away. But then there's before number and after number. And you have to figure out which one's which. So we're going to have to analyze this problem. In this case, the people had to be surveyed before we can determine which ones thought that the president was doing a good job. The survey had to come first. Then we can answer the other number, find the other number, because we had to have the survey and then we take the percentage after we surveyed all the people. So the way that we're going to set this problem up is the before number is the number of people that are surveyed. So the decimal for 44% is 0.44. And we're going to take that times 1,096 to get what we're asking for the after number. The after number is how many people in that poll said the president was doing a good job. So now that we've got that, if you multiply 0.44 times 1,069, and you can verify this on your calculator. What did you get? That's exactly right. So our after number is 470.36. Now, can you have 0.36 of a person? No. No, people only come in whole numbers. So we're going to use our standard rounding rules in this case. 0.36 is less than 0.5. So we're going to round down to 307, or excuse me, 470. And then the last thing that it's very important that you do, nobody in the real world is going to hand you a sheet full of problems and say, here, solve all these equations for me. 
they're going to ask you questions like this. And when they ask you a question in English, you don't answer back with X equals. You answer their question in English in a complete sentence. So the answer to the question is 470 of the 1,069 people surveyed said the president is doing a good job. Anybody have any questions? And once again, you may have had some other method. You may have instinctively known how to do this problem. But I want you to get the idea of what happened first and then what had happened after that. So there's a before and after. That's going to be really important in tomorrow's lesson as well. Or, I'm sorry, Monday's lesson. <clears throat> so here's your first practice problem, and it's the same as the practice problem you have in front of you. And I want you to work with the people in your group to answer that question. I want you to show me all the work on your paper, on your notes. Write down your steps. Do not write down answers. If you've already looked at the homework problems, you know that I already gave you the answers. So you can't give me what I already gave you. I want to know what happened between the problem. That is the correct number, but that's not what I want. I want to know the answer to the question. And that's in a complete sense. And I'm not fussing at you. I'm trying to get you into that mode of thinking. So this one and this one need to be in sentences if you're just answering the question. So it's this. Now that first one is a good answer. The second one tells me how you work the problem. And that's great too. How did you decide that 1800 was the before number. Because it says that there were 1800 people attending if there were 1800 people attending the mm -hmm. conference. Okay, and, and the only way you're going to find out how many of them were women was if you had you counted the attendees before you figure out how many of them were women. Yes. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? That's what I want you to focus on. The math in this shouldn't be hard. The arithmetic shouldn't be hard. We went through percents. You know how to multiply. You can use your calculator. What is going to be a little harder is going to be how do I reason through this word problem? I hate word problems. I don't like word problems. But folks, life is a word problem. It works that way. So you're going to have to use those thinking skills. Okay, the correct answer is that the 810 people attending the conference were women. Or there were 810 women attending the conference. Anything that's in a complete sentence is fine. And I see people are experimenting and showing me how they got their answer, and that's great. That's what I want you to do. Anybody have any questions or are we ready to move on? Okay, let's go to the next practice problem. At Snack and Say, 20% of the customers order a deal pickle with their sandwiches. If 715 sandwiches were sold on Monday, how many customers also order dill pickles at Goldie's? Now you have the problem in front of you. Work with the people around you. And figure out what was before, what was after. Convert your percent. Do your equation, do the math. That's actually how 
I'm going to figure out what people want to be calling class to. That's actually a good observation because nowhere did it say Goldie's was the owner of the sack and say. understand how to set it up. that it said at snack and save at the end of the question. How do you know whether the other number in the problem is the before number or the after number? How do you know that the 710, I think it was 710, 715, 715, how do you know that that's the before number? Okay, that's the total that was sold on that day. So 750 people came up to the counter and they said, I want y'all get y'all sandwich. Okay? That's what they said before. Then all of those people say yes when the clerk said, Do you want to deal people with that? No, only 20%. Only 20% of them. So in order to figure out who ordered dill pickles, we had to know how many people there were total that ordered sandwiches. When you order your sandwich, you order your sandwich first, and then you say, oh, yes, I would like a dill pickle with that. Okay? So it's the idea of before and after. One more practice problem. Last year, there were 200 scholarship applicants. This year, the number of applicants is 110% of the number of applicants from last year. How many applicants are there this year? Now, you have to answer individually, but I want you to, sh to work together as a group to get that answer.
Okay, looks like I'm the only one that has an answer. Now, what happens after I leave this screen? Is it recorded your answers and I go on to the next problem? Okay? In some cases, I'll give you a question where there will be multiple choice answers. And if I do that, then I can actually show you what part of the class answered the question correctly. I'm not basing today's quiz grade on correct answers. I'm basing it on, did you get the right number? Did you answer? This is just kind of for practice, okay? Because you've not ever done this before. This is a new learning experience for you. So the correct answer was 220 scholarship applicants this year, okay? Here's our next example problem. In 2008, Barack Obama received 69.4 million votes. If he received 52.9% of the popular vote, how many people voted in the presidential election in 2008? Now the percentage is obvious, 0.59529. At least I hope it is. The people voted before we could determine what percentage of them or how many of them voted for Obama. So the before number in this case was everybody that voted. And the after number was the percentage of all the people that voted and they were the ones that voted for Obama, okay? This is a different setup from what we did before. The percent is 0.529. The after number is 69.4 million. This time the question asks us what the before number was. So what we do is we use X to represent the unknown. I don't want you to get into the idea of I always have to set up an equation, okay? That's not the point here. There's two patterns I want you to see today. I'm gonna come back and summarize those at the end. But this time, I want you to notice that in order to solve this equation, you don't multiply it this time. You don't get your answer by multiplying. You actually have to solve this one by using some algebra techniques. Don't focus on the algebra. Focus on the process. 
When we have the before number, which was the problems before this, when we had the before number and we needed the after number, what mathematical process did we use? multiplication. This time we don't know the before number, we have the after number. What process are we having to use? Division. Division. Okay? We're going to divide on both sides. So 69.4 million divided by 0.529 is 131.2 million people that voted in the presidential election in 2008. Okay? When you know the before, you multiply. When you know the after, you divide. There's always going to be only two numbers in the problem a before number and an after number. You have to figure out which one of those numbers is given to you. Is it the before number or the after number? Once you figure out that process, all you got to know is do I multiply or divide? If you got before, multiply. If you got the after number of the problem, divide. Okay? Here's one for you to do. If 351 women at a conference comprise 45% of all the people at the conference, how many people are at the conference? <laughs> work, work with your partner. <clears throat> Let's assume in this problem, I'm going to tell you, I'll have to tell Miss Daphne that you, know, you really make life interesting for me on this one. Because she, she wrote the book. She's the, the author of the book. She's the course coordinator. But let's assume that Goldie's is the same as Snack and Save in this case. 20% of the customers ordered a dill pickle. If there were 465 dill pickles sold on Tuesday, how many total customers were at Snack and Save? I will fix that after class. <clears throat> I didn't even catch it when I first did it. So, uh, uh, we thought you intentionally threw that in there uh, to, I guess, express the practical application. Of the, uh, no, I'll tell you the truth. If I didn't intentionally throw it in there, if it actually comes out to be an accident, but I will also give you credit if I mess up. Like on a quiz, it is entirely possible that I will cross things up like that. If somebody says, I can't answer this, looking correct, be sure that you answer in a sentence on your paper. Show the equation, show the arithmetic you did, but answer the question as well. Okay? <laughs> somebody must have done it. <laughs> Okay, next problem. This year, there are 440 scholarship applicants, which is 110% of the number of applicants from last year. How many applicants were there last year? Before I have you get started with each other, what's the before? What's the before? Which do you have, before or after? You have the after. You're looking for before, well, last year. Last year came before this year. So your process is going to be to divide. Then 
This time you enter your own answers. This time try to type in what you did to get the answer and then the answer as a sentence. Try to do it like you, like you were doing this as if it were a real quiz. and work the problems the way that I showed you today for the rest of the lessons in this course. That understanding is going to carry you through this whole course. This part, I really expect you to struggle a little bit. Okay? Problem solving does not come naturally or easily to anybody. I don't want you to say, I just don't, I can't do this. I want you to add one word to, I can't do this. I can't do this yet, but I'm still going to work on it, and I'm still going to try. I can learn this. I can't do this yet, but I'm going to keep working until I can do this. Okay? That's something called a growth mindset. Fixed mindset says, says that some people are just smart.